you guys we need to talk christine and nigel winning the perfect match season two definitely not i for sure didn't see that coming i honestly thought it was going to be between lara and steven and tolu and chris felt strongly in my mind that lara and steven deserves it because they have been together from day one day i mean i know that the fact that they don't have issues doesn't make them the strongest couple but like based on what was shown to us those two should have won it and that's why i really don't like the whole idea of voting and whatnot because i understand that a lot of the contestants that didn't vote for those couple their reasons stem from a place of spite you know they are still mad at what they did so Alice, um Santi, i'm sure she did not vote for them you know a good number of people like that so i understand that the voting process or the voting procedure might not fall in their favor but really i think they just got their own birth perfect map but we the viewers we know those or we know the couple that deserved that win but we're gonna move on from that quickly because we have other matters to attend to ari 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 oh my goodness you guys i don't even have a script i hope i do not talk so much that i forget to actually talk about the things that we need to like really discuss in this review and i really hope it doesn't get as long as my previous review episode one to nine got but yeah I don't understand the rationale behind men lying or just anybody lying and lying when you know for sure that this thing was caught on camera. Yo, you know, just we had with Lebo and Nola on the ultimatum South Africa. I reviewed it on my channel in case you missed that. It is on my channel. Please check it out. I'm like, why are you lying when you know that every and everything, almost everything you guys did was documented? They might choose to leave it out for some reason, but the fact that they keep lying like it never happened, the fact that you, no matter how you ignore the truth, that doesn't make it less of a truth. That doesn't make it a lie. And you know, I know I came on here saying, oh, Melinda, yeah, I agree, Melinda, and I still stand on my words. Melinda was actually doing too much at some point and mostly on the part of oh i can get any man i mean i get the whole confidence and everything but like a kind of woman didn't need to say a lot to be seen and to be noticed she stands out really well so i was just quite taken aback and disappointed that she was saying a lot and doing too much to kind of stand out and you know make a mark on the show right but yeah away from melinda now back to ari and jessica I'm just like, was it thinking, you know, the, the product producers are not going to show it. They're not going to reveal the secret to us, knowing fully well that Ari has a track record that he has. And, you know, they even did him dirty by exposing, you know, showing us a clip where he went to production and, and he was asking them that, did you guys get Melinda and I kissing? Like, um, um, I didn't mean for it to happen. Could you not show it to Jess? And I'm just like, wow. Like, if you can do that where there are cameras that are recording 24-7, how much more can you do when there is no one watching and it's just you and your decisions? Like, and I know I mentioned it that, yes, Ari might want to be the best guy. might want to be a lead man for, you know, Jessica and her daughter. But, like, what happens when she's not there to keep you in check what happens when she doesn't have her eyes looking at you like an orc what kind of decisions would you make then i mean i was starting to believe in ari a bit although i wasn't really buying it she's such an emotional person and a sensitive person she gives you the vibe of this woman that puts her all into something or someone when she's doing it so i can understand if the emotions from her own end were pure and genuine but with ari oh god i get that he might want to be a better version of himself or he still wants to be a better version of himself but um, I'm, I'm just like it would have been better for him to have admitted to his wrongs and you know let jessica make her decision owning up to your mistakes doesn't make it hurt less but I mean, it doesn't push your hurts for that, right? Because he tried convincing her that it didn't happen. It didn't happen. She's here for 15 minutes. Fame. Oh, it's so disgusting. Now I'm even talking about it in depth. It made the other lady look like a psychopath. It made Jess look like she she didn't have a she didn't have the power to you know reason things on her own and believe what people were saying. She didn't have the strength to process information and make you know a reasonable decision for herself and her future and i just felt that was just very much disrespectful but yeah i could go on and on about jessica and ari but let's not do that i like that she made that decision for herself to move away from even ari. if he didn't do the things melinda accused him of 
the situation was already messy it wasn't looking good for uh, ari it wasn't looking good for jessica Musa especially so i think even her working her working away was the best decision i mean i like that she moved away from the old thing left the show and i also didn't expect that she would come on the show we saw that you know tolu and chris won the um last compatible test and they got to go to the boardroom to bring new singles and they paired up jessica and easy they were very much aware that easy and mike has match was just a friendship match for them to just stay grow out something from their friendship there was nothing really romantic about their match i can't really remember how easy's run on love is blind went but i know that he got to the altar but he didn't say yes i think it stemmed from a place of like finance if i'm not mistaken he didn't have his like credit card um in check and all that like he had some financial constraints that was like the ma major reason why i think his partner didn't say yes to him or something of that sort i might be mixing it up i might be wrong if you do know let me know in the comment section but yeah so for easy to have gotten to the stage of you know going to the altar and saying no it meant that you know he was committed to the process he really wanted to get married but he considered some things and decided that moving forward with that marriage wasn't the best decision for him or the, the person coming on a show for like perfect my yes he could have found somebody for him but it's just unfortunate that ma majority of those that have gone through this netflix dating franchise most of them are just open they're just jumping sheep looking for the next exciting thing most of them are not really dedicated they're not committed some are just going for the fame you know he had more following to their following on socials they get more endorsement they get more popular i don't think some people most of them were actually on the lookout for like a perfect match like easy and jessica were looking forward to and you know i really hope that you know easy gets the best person for him out there you know he tried to get this thing on with jessica but jessica is someone that is genuine and true to herself likewise easy and they had to come to a conclusion that this is not working we can't proceed beyond friendship it's best we leave here and not waste each other's time so yeah i really did not expect jessica to make a comeback but she did and i like that she left when she felt like okay i've given another man another shot but i don't think this is it and i just need to move on there was no point forcing it and i really respected the both of them for that another person that my respect goes to would have to be justin for not attending the reunion because i'm not about to sit down there and watch you try to be the perfect match with somebody that you left almost last minute to the end of the show when we had connected like i said in my last video as much as i love her i just feel like she used justin to stay on the show up until the point where she felt like okay this is more exciting this is what i really really go for and then jump ship i understand that that's the point of the show you keep swapping partners until you actually find the person that you connect with but then again it's like a detriment to unhealthy relationship a long-lasting relationship for how long will you continue to jump ship before you find the right person but yeah who else am i missing out on we saw that um steven and ara remained even to the end of the show they were cute and this little you know camp thing that steven did for her was really romantic and was really sweet i don't know if they are still together if all they had was all they had on the show like he didn't exceed the show i still feel like they were the they were one couple that got the best out of that you know experience like actually loving someone genuinely enjoying the person's company making the person laugh the person making you laugh you caring for each other taking care of each other i feel like it's an experience that you know a lot of the contestants on that show didn't get to have and even if they did not last after the outside of the house i still feel like what they had was really sweet really cute really romantic and really genuine we saw that chris and tolu still stayed on to the end you know i don't know what you guys think about chris and tolu a lot of people are of the notion that chris or tolu is not chris's type just string along with her to the end just for the fun of it i really don't know they seem to be genuine i mean from tolu's end point i feel like tolu, tolu was really into him she really likes him she really enjoys his company and she was really connecting on a deeper level with him and you know chris was telling us the same thing but you know this man to say one thing and do the other thing or mean the other thing and considering the fact that he had told zanti or somebody that he feels like his relationship with tolu was limiting him from exploring other options in the house that just made me iffy about him but yeah 
i really do not know let me know what you think in the comment section elise and brighton oh my goodness brighton saying he knows that he can come off as being a joker a playful person someone that is here for the fun of it and just wants to play and laugh and crack jokes but he kind of knew it when he just knew it within himself that it, eventually one lady at least would be able to see the other side of him that is serious and level-headed and committed i'm like okay 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 whatever whatever you say whatever to make yourself look good on camera but i just feel like you got two chances already we saw you on um squid game the challenger now we're seeing your perfect match and this guy has not exhibited the traits or the character of someone that is serious someone that is mature so you know all of these things you're saying, I'm not buying it. But it's so sad. I mean, I would even say that it's so sad for Elise. I mean, she made that choice. And uh, yeah, it is what it is. She left a better man for a child. So, whatever. Um, Micah and Kaz and Christine. Oof, you know, it occurred to me when I was editing my last video that I kept calling Kaz Zach. I really don't know where that came from. But yeah, Micah and Kaz. We saw that at the beginning of episode 10, Micah and zach and you see i'm already saying zach kaz and christine were together and then christine got put on a date with um nigel and it was like a test for the both of them let them see if they are going to turn ed you know and just before night um christine will come back from the date you know kaz was already looking for like a second option a safer option going back to um uh, micah to apologize and all that frankly i think he genuinely liked micah they genuinely liked each other and they were really building something but you know the arguments that came about during the last night or the few hours before he eventually matched with christine i feel like that added to or that kind of frustrated him into making that decision of matching with christine although kaz wasn't in it 100 percent he was still looking around and like i said in my last video he is a kind of guy that knows that he's good looking he's a, he attracts women but he doesn't know how to set boundaries especially when he's with a woman and it's it's terrible that he's with someone that is insecure to an extent someone that needs reassurance every now and then someone that needs to feel safe and secure and they were having like little arguments here and there so yeah it was just that i was during the time where their relationship was going through like a shaky phase that was when christine came in and like i said i was like i said it that if christine has her eyes on cars then it's a done deal like she's she, she's gonna get him like especially when the guy likes something attractive something fun and all that i knew it was gonna go to christine so him coming back to apologize to my car when christine was on a date i'm just like okay if christine didn't have to go on a date would you have still come back to my car regardless and say okay i'm sorry i think i made a mistake she's not the one for me i enjoy what we both have other than what i have with her so i don't know i i i i sense some foul play there i mean yes he might have liked her he might have genuinely connected with her but it wasn't with any 100 percent and micah wasn't blameless like she was insecure she was complaining a lot and imagine the night she got to spend with easy I felt like she complained till they fell asleep and she started complaining when they woke up again. I think she exhibited that trait when she was on Love is Blind. And I'm just like, nobody wants to be with this kind of person. I even felt sorry for Izzy. Like, I get that Izzy is like, oh, you can talk to me. You can tell me whatever is on your mind. You can, off, off, you know, offload your burdens on me and all that. But that doesn't mean you should now keep talking, talking and almost talking the guy's year off and... I mean, I get that he knows that this connection or this match is not from a romantic place, but like, allow the guy breathe. But then again, you can't blame her hundred percent. She genuinely like cars, and you know, of course, the only person she felt that like she she could talk to that was available to talk to her or listen to her at least was easy, and that was what she did. So yeah, like a two way thing. What other couple am I missing? Um, you know, Christine matching with Nigel. I think fit each other. They are both flirtatious it was i feel like their relationship but it came from a place of lust i'm not i don't think there's love involved which makes me more mad that you know they want perfect match like these people got together for just two days and so people had been together for three weeks so i think we were made to understand that this show lasted for about a month or more so imagine a couple they've been together from like the second week and then you are coming like two days to the end of the show and you're winning perfect match 
I just feel like regardless of the fact that they might feel spiteful towards some couple or they might feel anger towards some um towards some couple or some resentment, if they are still worth being crowned the perfect man, you should have given it to them at least, regardless of the rift or the bad blood between the both of you. But yeah, it just I mean, if I have to blame anybody, we are we can definitely just blame the contestant. They casted the votes, they chose their own perfect match, and I think it's a shame. It's a shame to every one of them, especially those that started from the beginning, that you crowned a couple that started two weeks, two days to the end of the show, the perfect match. I don't know. Yeah, saying they look like chocolate on top of chocolate. Like, is that what perfect match is all about? What about their compatibility? What about their bond? What about, you know, the test they've had to go through? They were not tested at all. The both of them were not tested. You guys, I don't know what you guys think about the show. Now that, you know, I feel like a lot of the singles from the netflix dating show have uh, they've been on this second season of perfect match i wonder who they'll be bringing in the next season if we get a third season or is it just going to be rinse and repeats Ugh, I, I really cannot even begin to imagine how that would look or how that would feel at this point and i know that eventually they are going to bring other singles and maybe a few people might appear again but if we get another season, we really do hope it's better. I feel like I prefer season one's winner. Even though both of them ended up cheating on each other. I mean, the lady ended up cheating on him. And Dom came back for season two and ended up messing his like, track record. But like with their, with their journey on season one and their win, I feel like it was so worth it. But with these people winning this show right now, this second season, I'm just like, what? like just get out. Get out, get out. I don't want to say it. I was damn shocked. Yeah, but let me know. Did you predict Christina and Nigel winning? Let me know in the comment section. What was your highlight from the entire season? Would you be seeing the third season if we get a third season? Let me know in the comment section. Let's chat. What if I am forgetting something? I feel like I rambled a lot in this video because I didn't have a script. But yeah, my bad. My fault. I take responsibility. Please like this video if you enjoyed watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're yet to subscribe. Check out my other videos as well. I'll also see my next review. But until then, make sure to remain happy because you're with yourself. Bye, guys.